Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today we are going to discuss about Australia versus Facebook which is getting bigger and bigger. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also important from the perspective of GS mains paper 2 and 3. So let's begin but before we begin I would like to tell you an information about the offline batches at the Prayagraj branch. We are starting with our offline batches in English medium from 24th of February and in Hindi medium from 5th of April and both the batches will be morning batch from 8 to 10. If you want to know more about it, you can contact on the given number or which is the branch itself. So if we talk about the topics of discussion, first of all, we will talk about why news, then we will talk about Australia versus Facebook, what the entire situation suggests. We will also talk about the core issue. What is the actual issue that lies behind entire this tussle, power tussle? We will talk about its impacts, India's perspective, and advantages, disadvantages in the midst of the segment. I am going to ask you a pre-based question for which if you know the answer, kindly comment in the comment section. Alright, so let's begin with why in news as the power struggle between the Australian government and Facebook is growing bigger and bigger. The Australian Prime Minister has said that he had talks with his Indian counterpart about the issues ranging from maritime cooperation to science and tech and also the new media bill. Not only India has extended its support to the Australian Prime Minister, but also its counterparts from Canada, France and UK are also showing solidarity. And if we talk about the issue, the entire background needs to be taken into the picture first. We will talk about the background, of course. So back in 2017, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, it recommended a voluntary code. Its aim was to address the negotiating skew between major digital platforms and media businesses. So this commission, it proposed a code of conduct, a model voluntary code under which the big tech companies such as Facebook and Google who are driven, who have a driven traffic with the help of the news or the content that is provided by big media houses, they need to pay those media houses for using that content. So that was the entire plan of it. And the Australian government using that particular code in 2019 asked various stakeholders and ACCC to develop this voluntary code. And after that, the proposed bill, news media bill and digital platforms mandatory bargaining code bill 2020, it had an aim to force internet giants Facebook and Google to pay media companies for the news content that is published on their platforms. Now this news, whatever the news is being published on the platforms, it actually attracts traffic and many people, especially in Australia, they do depend on such platforms such as Facebook and Google to have a look what is going around the world. So that is the entire, that is the ins- entire concept of this bill, to have a proper payment system if we talk about the big tech companies and of course the uh, the social media platforms that is that and the provision which was very contested was requiring google and facebook to enter into payment negotiations with media companies with an arbiter mandated to adjudicate if no agreement is reached and under this particular bill it says that the media companies and the social media companies, the news media and the social media will try to reach an agreement about the payment system, what will be the quantum of payment for whatever content is provided. And if an agreement is not reached, then there will be an arbiter. And that arbiter will take care that there should be a level playing field between the small media houses and the big media houses and the big tech companies. And that was very contested. That is the entire bone of contention here. Then, Facebook retaliated by blocking access to the important news platforms. Recently, Facebook did not agree to it. And it retaliated by blocking the news access to the citizenry of Australia. And during that entire process, they also blocked many emergency and crisis services as well. So that, of course created a lot of chaos in Australia. And after that, the government said that we will not let big tech companies such as Facebook and Google to bully them. And even though 
they are changing the world they are not driving this world so we need to come in solidarity and talk a proper business model with them right and australian pm then brought the attention of the world to the entire issue and through twitter he actually drummed up support from many countries as i have mentioned already and if we talk about this particular tweet you can see that he has tweeted that both the prime ministers had a talk about the proposed media bill and how india can also draw the support of the prime minister of australia and it was also said in an australian media platform that yes the prime minister of australia did had a talk with the prime minister of india especially at a time when facebook is trying to tap the huge market in india right moving on if we talk about the core issue now if we talk about the core issue google also had a problem with this entire provision saying that google if asked to agree to that bill agree to that proposed law it will remove its search engine from australia but it did backtrack and it said that yes we are ready to come into any sort of agreement and it as it has already come into agreement with news corps limited so what will google do google will have a um, commitment and agreement about the payment system when it comes to using the content of different news media platforms and if we talk about uk or in in the us in 2019 facebook already has a pact with the us when we talk about the using of the content from different media platforms and if we talk about uk it will still come into practice recently it was said that facebook will come in terms with uk and it will actually have ties with the economist the independent and the guardian many big newspapers of uk so here the fight in australia if we talk about it is not centered about the payment it is actually centered about how will they negotiate and the provision of the arbitrage these two are the main issues because if we talk about the european countries the european countries have a copyright system when it comes to payment but here in australia it is much more of striking a deal bargaining a proper payment contract with different news media so that is the entire issue and here it is centered on how much control these companies would be able to retain in their payout process again operational aspect such as designing the quantum of payment for news feed source and having to reveal changes in their algorithm so they are going also they are also going to provide what algorithm they prefer when it comes to putting how the news will appear and how the news will con will be consumed by the different citizenry how basically the social media platform will put the news in order for to reach the news to the maximum maximum citizens possible so that is the entire issue because they also have to reveal changes in their entire algorithm system algorithm system does keep in mind that yes we have to follow these guidelines in order to reach in order for the news a to reach the maximum population rather than news b so that is the entire issue it's a power struggle now if we talk about impacts first because of the blocking of these sites because of the blocking of the post from different news media platforms by facebook recently in australia facebook has attracted negative attention and it has infringed upon the citizens rights to know more about what is going around the world the citizen in order to express freely needs to be informed about it until and unless that is going to happen if you're not providing fake news you're at least keeping the real news you're withholding the real news and it is infringing upon the citizens right to know then similar demands in other nation if facebook is going to concede to the demands of australia similar will be the needs of other countries as well especially in india right if we talk about india's perspective now india here the focus on the dominance of intermediaries such as google and facebook is a lot and india has already been in talks with facebook how they are going to manage the entire data we have recently seen that because of the changing 
of the WhatsApp privacy policy. It was such a big deal, even if it was not as dangerous as it was made to be because of the infodemic. But you can see that, of course, Facebook needs to be very careful when it comes to India because Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, these all have a huge market in India. Also, a substantial discussion on the impacts of intermediary platform has not started yet. Now, according to Fiki EY report for 2020, there are 300 million users of online news sites, portals, aggregators in the country, making up approximately 46% of internet users and 77% of smartphone users in India at the end of 2019. And if we talk about the income generated through these aggregators, through these portals, it is actually increases on an yearly basis by 24%. That means it's a growing and inflated market. And if we talk about more unique users to come, they're approximately to come in the next two to three years, 282 million unique users. So of course, it can't be underemphasized. So Daily Hunt and InShorts, these are other major news aggregators in India. So these aggregators were already paying something for pay, paying five to six lakhs per month for the different news media platforms in order to drive traffic in order to attract traffic towards their portals. But after the terms were changed, they changed their sources. Now, if we talk about Facebook's, Facebook's justification of not paying the news hours for using their content, it's that because of Facebook sharing their posts, because of the social media being the only platform for some people to reach the news of big media houses, they're already getting so much attention and so much popularity. So that is why Facebook has justified this by saying that we need not to pay them for that. All right, moving on, if we talk about the advantages, first advantage is accountability. Now, Facebook, in order to make sure that they are paying the news or the news house, which is accurate in nature, which is authentic in nature, it will increase accountability indirectly and there will be a system of business model that we created not only for Australia but also for other countries as well. So this is going to be a justification in the sense that yes the hard work of a journalist will not be in vain and it will also check the infodemic. Infodemic in the sense there was a lot of misinformation that was doing rounds in Facebook but now if there will be a pattern to have a contract, a sustainable business model, it will also check that the wrong information does not reach the citizen. And democratic in nature, of course, right? Freedom of expression and freedom of expression could be related to right to information. So that's, of course, an interrelated concept. And it will also check centralization. Centralization in the sense that because Facebook will develop a systematic business model, on the basis of that, many other social media platforms can also develop the same model. And because of that, there will be a decentralized system of dissemination of information. Okay, so let's move on and talk about the disadvantages. First, haven for the rich in the sense that Facebook will try to increase inequality by paying only to those media houses which are already big in nature which already have huge expanse and it will be at the cause of new and small media houses. So it will be haven for the rich, they will get richer, there will be an unequal competition, a lack of level playing field. Now, lack of level playing field in the sense there may be some loopholes which could be exploited by big tech companies in order for the big tech companies to make sure that they pay only those media houses which are already popular in nature. So that will be an unequal competition. The small media houses will be weeded out. So if we talk about the freedom of expression, you have to tell me under which article do we find it in our constitution. All right. So pattern distortion around the globe. Now many news channels and media houses will also come into contract with Facebook if they find that if Facebook finds that in order for the citizens of one country to be more attracted. Some kind of news could be more in circulation, some kind of media houses could be more in circulation, which actually have propaganda 
and authentic and news which is very plain in nature could be left out so that will also cause a pattern distortion around the globe when it comes to the consumption of particular kind of news all right so i hope you understood this topic well that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching